This is a recap of Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 2, Episode 1. This is a good series, so let me explain it first. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. We're going to clear the decks and recap a new program. This program is much better than the last recap of the program that I did. This is Season 2 of Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 2, Episode 1. But before I show you the different paintings and we discuss them, I want to just show you how the program works because it's somewhat complicated. So I'm going to use this diagram. So basically what it is, is they set up the room into three different parts. So the subject is going to be these heads and then four contestants are lined up to paint. So there are 12 different competitors and from these 12 competitors, they pick three finalists for this particular heat and only one person will go on to what they call the semifinals. It's a little bit confusing, but I want you to know there are more participants in this program to evaluate than there were in Landscape Painter of the Year. So with that said, let's get started. First, we have to look at our models. This is Maisie Williams. She has a role of Arya Stark in Game of Thrones. The second participant is a British football defender named Saul Campbell. And the third is John Humphreys, a journalist, author, and broadcaster. So those are the three people that are going to be painted. And let's look at the setup for Maisie. This is what the four participants had to look at. And now let's look at their pieces. All right, this is piece number one, and it was very hard to get these screenshots. There's, a, I could, I think I only got a couple of uh, the people, people's paintings from Maisie, but there it is. Uh, only one of the participants is a watercolorist, although this looks very much like it is a watercolor. Now, what I should also say is also in the program is the people who are being painted get to select one of the paintings to take home with them. And Maisie did select this one. So she said it was the way she would like to see herself portrayed. All right, so that's the first one. This is the best shot I could get of three participants who were painting. You see the one that I just showed you a close up of and two others. I couldn't get the fourth one in. I just couldn't get a picture of the fourth a participant, but there were four people painting Maisie at the time. And it is over a four hour period. And this was the one that the judges selected for, what did they select this one for? I guess for final judging. Yeah, I guess so. Um, they, they loved the coloring of this and felt it was, yeah, I don't even remember the reasons. <laughs> Maybe it was the most finished of the pieces. I'm going to go with that now that I'm looking over the program again. I realize that if, any, if nothing else, this was the most finished of the pieces. But um, certainly not my favorite, and I suspect not yours. Now let's take a look at the next one. This was John Humphreys. And you can see the setup as well as the painter who's, set, who's painting him. I wanted you to get a feel for what the space is. So that is participant number one. In, in, in this particular part. Here's participant number two, and oh my gosh, it's a watercolor. Can you believe it? A watercolorist got in there. That is as rare as a sunshiny day here in Vermont this summer. So, but I love how relaxed this one is. It's so hard to make a figure look relaxed, don't you think, when you're in, especially when you're doing watercolor? As I said, the, the people who are being painted got to pick one painting to take home that they loved, and this is the one that he chose. Uh, he chose this one to take home with him. He felt that it captured him very well. And um, and if you watch the program, I thought that watching this particular painter work was the most fascinating because it was one of those times when someone has the exact likeness and then they'll lose it for a little bit and then it comes back. And if you paint a portrait, I don't know if you've had that experience, but I have that experience all the time. I'll think that I have it and then it disappears. And I think, oh my gosh, how am I going to get it back? But um, she had really, really good drawing skills, and I think she captured him quite well. The judges like this painting, too. But let's move on. This is participant number 
three in this particular heat, and he also went for the more relaxed figure. Um, they didn't have a whole lot to say about this painting that I can recall, and I don't have a whole lot to say about it either, except it's pretty gutsy to take the whole, you know, do the whole figure. That's something I never do. I like to hone in uh, on specific features. That's what I do when I do dog portraits too. I will do the whole dog if someone asks me to, but generally I'd like to just get the gist, you know, the feel of what, what somebody is. And this was, I love this one. It, I wouldn't say it's a likeness, but I think it's the most well-painted and resolved of the paintings of John Humphreys. He did not select this one. I, I already told you the one he selected to take home. And um, I didn't tell you which one got selected for the finals of this particular program, but I will in a minute. Now let's look at the setup for the next model. All right, so this is Saul Campbell, and he's talking to one of the announcers, who's also an artist, and who's explaining why they set him up in this particular setting. And one of the reasons is because it looks like AstroTurf, and he's a soccer player. Ha ha, good idea. I couldn't get a good shot of this particular finished piece, but we're gonna look at it again later, where the artists, I like what they did in terms of uh, changing the background, using their imagination. It almost looks like the soccer ball is a globe of some kind, and he added the painting and took away all that green. The next painting that came up, the judges hardly talked, I don't think they mentioned this painting at all. Uh, if they did, I'm not aware of it, but uh, they, they did not like this painting, but I do. <laughs> it's very direct. It's a little bit like a mugshot in a way, but uh, I, I think it captured a lot of the stoicism with which he sat. The next one is the one that um, I probably liked the least, and I don't remember them saying much about this one either, although that doesn't matter. And remember, the sitter gets to pick one painting that they, from this particular day, that they can take home, and Saul chose the next painting, and I do agree with him. The next painting is the most painterly of the paintings that was done of him that day. Look at that. Wow, boy, I really love that. Mm. That's just a juicy, delicious painting. And, you know, I, re I also really love an unfinished painting, but that's me. Remember, they had four hours, and at the very end of this video, I'll show you my response, what I painted, and I gave it 45 minutes. That's about as long as I can go. <laughs> but that's why I'm not on this program. All right, so now the three finalists. Let's see who they chose. All right, of course I don't remember these people's names, but for Maisie, they picked this one. They liked the coloring of this particular uh, painter. His, uh, the, in, in other words, the palette that he used. Um, I guess compared to the other unfinished pieces, I, I, I'm not gonna disagree. And then this one of Saul, they really love this one, especially because the artist changed the background and added so many things that gave it a sense of place and also gave you more information about the sitter himself although they did concede that there was not a likeness, uh, you know, an exact likeness to the particular um, sitter. He was so athletic in terms of his build that I decided not to paint this one. I knew it was going to be a challenge. I thought, well, I'm going to pick the easiest one. Now, of course, the real participants don't get to do that. The next one that was chosen for of, of the three that might win this particular day is the watercolorist. And as I said earlier in this video, I love how relaxed this is. It also is unresolved because he spent so much time on the uh, clothing. Well, on lots of things. Uh, maybe it is resolved because, you know, later he applies uh, for a landscape artist of the year and he does uh, several unfinished paintings. Although I never knew if he meant to finish them or not. This might be his thing. Anyway, those are the three who make it to the finals of this particular episode. And now it's time to announce the winner. The winner goes, and the winner is dun, 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 this one. <sighs> well, you know, uh, I don't disagree. Or maybe I do, actually. I really liked the one that, uh, that John Humphreys chose, the one with, where his face is in a very clear close up. And that was the most fascinating one to watch painted. But anyway, this artist's name is Raul, and he will go on to the semifinals, the real semifinals. And here comes my entry, which will, I'm sure, be underwhelming compared to everything else that showed up. But I decided to paint John Humphreys, 
and uh, and I enjoyed painting it very much. And this is the watercolor. And I do hope that in the future there are more watercolorists, but I suspect there won't be. There just don't seem to be. Watercolor will always be a second-class citizen, it would appear. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. If you want to join me in painting your own responses to this series, you can screen grab those beginning paintings, that, uh, pictures that I had that I screen grabbed and try yourself. Because it's fun to see. What would it be like if I was there? I mean, it's pretend, but it's, it's also fun. So um, see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.